Hello everyone, I'm Max and today we're delving into another distressing case. In many instances, addiction isn't the end of the road. Numerous individuals, including former alcoholics, manage to conquer their struggles, reintegrate into society, form families, and extend support to others facing similar challenges. Such is the trajectory of Nicole Pitts, whose promising life took a tragic turn. The saga surrounding Nicole commenced in King County, Washington in 1973 on February 26th. Despite the fractured union of her parents during her schooling years, Nicole seemed destined for a bright future. Yet her journey unraveled into a tangled web of events, culminating in a six-year investigation into a heinous crime that ultimately landed a suspect in the dock. Another year elapsed in court proceedings to secure the perpetrator's conviction and ensure the longest possible incarceration. Initially appearing meticulously orchestrated, this crime concealed within it minute details that, over years of meticulous investigation, coalesced into a comprehensive narrative. The culprit, buoyed by a false sense of impunity, lived a life untouched by justice until the accumulated evidence shattered his facade. Let's dissect this intricate tale, beginning with the enigmatic figure of Nicole Pitts, Nicole blossomed into an active and sociable child, thriving in sports and earning a reputation as a genuine charmer. With an abundance of friends, she relished trips to the countryside, with Lake Sammamish near Seattle emerging as her cherished summer retreat. Following her high school graduation, Nicole embarked on a journey to Western Washington College, immersing herself in public relations studies while maintaining her passion for athletics. Simultaneously, she leveraged her fitness prowess by securing a position as a trainer at a local sports club. Rapidly earning respect among peers and amassing a loyal clientele for her group classes, Nicole's ambition soared. Concurrently, she pursued further education and management, eventually landing a job at a prominent mobile communications company. Outwardly affable and always ready to lend a hand, Nicole concealed a profound struggle behind her facade of well-being. The trauma of her parents' divorce during her formative years inflicted deep wounds on her psyche. Coupled with a rebellious streak and the allure of negative influences, Nicole sought solace in alcohol, spiraling into a debilitating addiction that persisted for years, eroding her physical and mental well-being. Amidst her tumultuous battle, Nicole's mother, Gail, a flight attendant with a demanding schedule, initially remained unaware of her daughter's plight. Living with her elderly grandmother, Nicole's clandestine struggle escaped immediate notice. However, upon discovery, Gail, despite her own challenges, rallied to support her daughter. Together, they embarked on a journey of therapy and Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, Gail's partner, Rod, standing steadfast in his encouragement, treating Nicole as his own, believing fervently in her ability to overcome her affliction. Nicole approached therapy with dedication, attending every session and swiftly conquering her addiction. Nonetheless, the toll of alcohol on her health was significant. She developed severe pancreatic issues, necessitating surgery. Moreover, the early onset of alcohol abuse detrimentally impacted her reproductive health, rendering her unable to conceive. In the mid-90s, having emerged from the shadows of addiction and embracing sobriety, Nicole crossed paths with her future husband, David. At the time, she had just commenced her role as a coach at a sports club, where David, a tall and dashing regular attendee, caught her eye. Their mutual attraction blossomed into a romance, undeterred by the four-year age gap between them. For nearly eight years, they nurtured their relationship until tying the knot in 2002, opting for a simple yet elegant ceremony in Hawaii, attended solely by their closest confidants, the newlyweds settled in the serene town of Linwood, Washington, embarking on their shared journey together. After purchasing their own house, Nicole and David gradually settled into a comfortable routine. Nicole, known for her sociable and amiable nature, quickly forged friendships and fostered warm relationships with their neighbors. Her fondness for animals led to the adoption of several dogs, channeling her maternal instincts toward caring for her beloved pets, given her inability to have children. According to neighbors, David and Nicole epitomized the ideal married couple, often seen together, walking their dogs and exuding happiness. Nicole's culinary prowess added to their domestic bliss, 
delighting David with her delectable home-cooked meals and impressing guests with her culinary creations. However, in 2006, just days before her 33rd birthday, Nicole mysteriously vanished. Her absence raised immediate concern when she failed to attend the AA Society meeting, where she served as a leader and inspiration. Likewise, her absence from work alarmed colleagues. As the day wore on without any contact, Gail, Nicole's mother, grew increasingly worried, unable to reach her daughter. David, although aware of a disagreement with Nicole the day before, initially attributed her absence to lingering resentment. Consequently, he delayed reaching out until evening to reconcile. As the evening progressed with no sign of Nicole's return and her phone remaining unanswered, the family's anxiety intensified. Despite their pleas, the police initially dismissed their concerns, citing Nicole's status as an adult and the brief duration since her disappearance. However, when Nicole failed to reappear and remained unreachable the following day, authorities finally initiated a search, commencing from the couple's residence, where Nicole was last seen. Despite thorough investigation, no clues or anomalies were discovered at Nicole's residence, suggesting neither foul play nor signs of abduction. Coupled with the absence of her personal vehicle, hinted at a voluntary departure with no intention of returning, two plausible scenarios emerged. The first speculated that Nicole, following a marital dispute, chose to leave or stage her absence to unsettle her husband. The second, posited by Nicole's peers and the alcohol addiction support group, suggested a relapse after years of sobriety, fueled by the misuse of potent painkillers prescribed for a back injury. Evidence supporting this theory included Nicole's recent consumption of excessive pain medication, potentially leading to a transition from prescribed drugs to alcohol. The most distressing conjecture, however, implied Nicole's demise, as she failed to communicate any updates about her whereabouts. Despite the grim possibilities, Nicole's family clung to hope, refusing to accept the worst-case scenario and remaining optimistic about her safe return. Nicole's mother and stepfather refused to wait for the police's standard procedures and took immediate action, launching their own search efforts. They utilized social media platforms to mobilize community assistance, urging people to provide any relevant information about their missing daughter's whereabouts. Without hesitation, they boarded the first flight to Linwood, where they commenced their personal search, distributing flyers adorned with Nicole's photos and interviewing individuals who knew her personally. Concurrently, law enforcement scoured the area not only for Nicole but also for her vehicle, attempting to reconstruct its potential route on the day of her disappearance. However, as time passed, hope of Nicole's safe return dwindled, culminating in a tragic revelation a few days later. During a routine morning jog, a man stumbled upon the mutilated body of a young woman in a local park. The grim discovery prompted immediate notification to the authorities who swiftly dispatched forensic experts to the scene. Upon arrival, investigators discerned evidence suggesting a violent crime, as the victim's naked body bore signs of severe physical trauma. The absence of clothing and the presence of numerous injuries indicated a brutal assault, with asphyxiation identified as the cause of death. With grim certainty, law enforcement confirmed the grim reality. Nicole had been murdered. Nicole met a gruesome fate, strangled by her assailant's bare hands. The absence of her vehicle led investigators to consider theft as the primary motive. However, the attacker chose to silence Nicole, potentially indicating a more sinister motive, such as assault. The police immediately suspected the body they found belonged to Nicole, who had been missing for days. Despite this assumption, her family had yet to formally identify her. When Gail laid eyes on her daughter's lifeless form in the morgue, she was overwhelmed, requiring medical assistance to cope with the shock. Rod, her husband, also appeared grief-stricken, but some found his demeanor peculiar. Meanwhile, as the search for Nicole's vehicle continued, law enforcement maintained their belief that the car held vital clues to the perpetrator's identity. Public appeals for information regarding the missing car yielded results weeks later when it was discovered abandoned in a city parking lot. The unassuming gray Volkswagen Polo 
went unnoticed by the guard, unaware of its connection to a tragic murder case. The police promptly seized the car for thorough examination and analysis, anticipating it to yield crucial evidence and vital clues pivotal for tracking down the perpetrator and reconstructing the crime scene. However, their hopes were dashed as the vehicle yielded nothing of significance. Absent were any traces of blood, signs of struggle, or indications of a forcible abduction. Inside the cabin, fingerprints and DNA samples were limited to Nicole and her husband, who occasionally used the car. Despite the absence of overt evidence, investigators remained hesitant to return the vehicle to David, convinced that crucial evidence lay beneath the surface. The undeniable truth remained. Nicole had been brutally murdered, yet the motive behind the crime remained elusive. The initial theory of carjacking lost credibility, given the prompt abandonment of the vehicle across town, devoid of any signs of altercation. Similarly, the notion of sexual violence was refuted by forensic findings indicating no recent sexual activity. Attention turned to a potential personal motive or intense animosity harbored by the perpetrator towards the victim. This hypothesis was fueled by the severity of Nicole's injuries, suggestive of a frenzied attack. However, this theory was at odds with Nicole's amiable disposition and absence of known enemies or adversaries. The investigation thus faced a perplexing conundrum, grappling with the mystery of a heinous crime committed against a seemingly unassuming and benevolent individual. This perplexing case seemed destined to languish unsolved, with the investigation yielding no new leads or avenues for pursuing the culprit after nearly a year. The circumstances surrounding the abandonment of the car in the sparsely populated parking lot added to the mystery. Exacerbated by the absence of surveillance footage in the vicinity, a peculiar detail emerged. The driver of the car appeared significantly taller and larger than the victim, suggesting the involvement of an unidentified individual. Adding to the intrigue, the case was shrouded in secrecy, with authorities withholding vital information from the victim's family, leaving them in the dark regarding the progress of the investigation. Fragmentary updates provided little clarity, such as the revelation that Nicole's bank card had been used at a remote gas station following her disappearance. Yet the footage obtained remained enigmatic. Desperate for answers and frustrated by the lack of progress, Nicole's parents took matters into their own hands, engaging a private detective to conduct an independent inquiry. Offering a substantial reward of $10,000 initially, later increased to $35,000, they sought to incentivize anyone with pertinent information to come forward. Despite their efforts, the case remained stagnant, with David's initial interest in the investigation waning after the first six months. Subsequently, David gradually distanced himself, ceasing communication with his in-laws and eventually remarrying, even fathering a child. This revelation dealt a heavy blow to Gail, compounded by David's constant reproach regarding her daughter's inability to conceive. Struggling with grief, Gail voiced suspicions toward her son-in-law, yet many dismissed her accusations as rooted in resentment. The police likewise seemed to disregard such conjectures entirely, an unexpected turn in the case emerged six years later, when David was apprehended as the prime suspect, shocking many who had followed the investigation. However, Nicole's family and friends had harbored suspicions about him from the outset, openly discussing their doubts throughout the lengthy inquiry. While justice finally seemed within reach, David, who had since relocated and severed ties with Nicole's family, was taken aback by his arrest believing the case long closed and his actions unnoticed. Maintaining his innocence, David agreed to undergo a polygraph test, which he failed miserably. Despite initial suspicions, the police lacked concrete evidence against him. To avoid spooking the culprit into hiding, they refrained from aggressive tactics, instead meticulously gathering evidence over the years to ensure a just outcome. David's belief in his foolproof crime crumbled as investigators scrutinized each anomaly, starting with surveillance footage from the gas station where Nicole's card had been used after her death. The surveillance footage indicated a man resembling David using Nicole's card, although obscured by a headdress and dark glasses, rendering positive identification impossible. 
Despite its limitations, this footage was included in the case file. Another anomaly was the absence of Nicole's wedding ring, initially presumed stolen. However, it was discovered within her home, contradicting theft suspicions. During the investigation, a dental mouth guard was found in Nicole's mouth, a recent prescription to alleviate teeth grinding caused by nervousness. This detail suggested that she was killed while asleep in her own bed, explaining the absence of clothing, lack of resistance marks, and the pristine condition of her body. Additionally, Nicole's lack of makeup, which she habitually applied before leaving the house, supported this theory. Regarding the mouth guard, it was possible that David simply forgot about it, given Nicole's recent use of it. Furthermore, analysis of the driver's seat position in the abandoned car revealed anthropometric data consistent with David's. Moreover, only David and Nicole's fingerprints were found inside the vehicle, further implicating him in the investigation. If a third person had been present in the cabin, their traces would have been evident. Even if this individual had attempted to erase any evidence, it would likely have erased traces and prints of the car's owners as well. Additionally, a crucial discovery was facilitated by advancements in technology. Following the crime, the perpetrator utilized the victim's phone multiple times across various locations in the city. Remarkably, signals from David's phone coincided with these instances. Further scrutiny revealed that David harbored motives within the facade of their seemingly perfect family. While Nicole diligently balanced studies, dual employment, and aiding those battling addiction, her husband led a considerably idle lifestyle. David's transient employment history, frequent socializing in bars and clubs, often at the expense of his wife's earnings, exacerbated their financial strain. Despite Nicole's efforts to encourage David to seek help for his addiction by attending AA meetings, his dismissive attitude persisted. Compounding matters, David engaged in systematic infidelity, propositioning Nicole to join him in his liaisons, all of which she vehemently rejected. On one occasion, David even attempted to coerce her by getting her intoxicated. Gail, fully aware of the distress within her daughter's marriage, urged her to reconsider her situation. Despite Gail's interventions, the horrors within the family persisted. As the financial strain worsened, Nicole's attempts to steer David towards rehabilitation were met with ridicule and scorn. Furthermore, David's persistent infidelity and manipulative behavior only exacerbated their marital discord. However, she resisted taking this step because of her love for him and her hope that David would change. Yet following Nicole's mysterious death, her husband swiftly pursued a substantial insurance payout and promptly initiated a new relationship. It was later uncovered that several months prior to the tragedy, David had been unfaithful with a woman named Jane, frequenting bars and clubs with her while Nicole was preoccupied with work or studies. Just before Nicole's birthday, David brazenly brought his mistress to their home, where they were unexpectedly discovered by Nicole upon her return. This incident sparked a heated family argument prompting Nicole to confide in her mother, with whom she shared a close relationship. Suspicions initially fell on her son-in-law, but law enforcement deemed the evidence insufficient to warrant his arrest. Consequently, the case was classified and the family was left in the dark regarding any progress in the investigation. Over time, their hope for justice dwindled. Following David's reception of a significant insurance settlement, following Nicole's demise, he lavished expenditures on Jane. Gail posited the theory that David's mistress might have been an accomplice to the crime, but lacking evidence, she was only brought in as a witness. David's trial commenced in September 2013, during which he vehemently denied any involvement in the tragedy. Initially, his defense team argued that the evidence against him was circumstantial and insufficient to establish guilt. However, as incriminating evidence mounted, the defense shifted tactics, endeavoring to portray David as a victim. They attempted to insinuate that Nicole's consumption of pain medication following her back injury had led her to relapse into alcoholism, making her husband's life intolerable. These claims were refuted by those who knew Nicole, and even if true, they could not justify David's heinous actions. Ultimately, David was convicted of his crimes and sentenced to the maximum term allowable by law in the state where the trial occurred, 18 years in prison. However, 
he may be eligible for parole in 2025 after serving two-thirds of his sentence. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more compelling stories on our channel.